Everybody, this is a friction folder I made. This is my second homemade knife, my first folding knife. Um, chose a friction folder mainly for ease of production, and uh, I've always thought they're kind of neat, very simple knives. Um, so, right off the bat, JG10, 0.187 thick, along with the blade, 0.187 thick. It's on phosphor bronze washers. Uh, hardware here is uh, actual chain ring bolts from a mountain bike. Um, and then the standoffs are an aluminum uh, shock mount mounting bushing for a mountain bike as well. Um, oversized hardware just basically for looks. As you can see I have a lanyard on it. Um, the lanyard bead is quite oversized. It's a uh, barrel lock and a climbing carabiner. Um, the size of it allows it to actually be quite useful. It is aluminum so it's really light. And I use this to pull it out of the pocket and manipulate the knife in my hand. If you're unfamiliar with um, friction folders, you'll notice that the tang is quite long in this knife, and this acts as a lock, and I'll explain that in a second. Um, this cutout here is for the blade stop, basically. Um, and then you can see there's jumping up there. Pocket clip is titanium, again, made by me. Titanium pocket, um, pocket clip screws there. Um, some people are concerned about friction folders opening in their pocket especially with the pocket clip, but I uh, run it right pocket carry and the clip is situated in a way where the knife actual blade runs along the inseam of my pants, so uh, it won't open. And I run it kind of tight anyway, so it's not going to open either. Um, comes to opening the knife, um, like I said, I usually just, I usually use the lanyard, I kind of pinch it like that, and then the jimping there, and we just open it like that. Having carried this for a while, I've gotten pretty quick with it, so it's really not a, much of a hindrance at all. As you can see, the blade shape is kind of funky on this knife. Um, it's only my second knife, so I didn't want to do anything too complex. Uh, it is a chisel grind, unfortunately. It's not much of a hindrance, but it's uh, a little bit of an annoyance. It doesn't look very good from the non-presentation side. Uh, it's 1095 steel. Uh, heat treat was in the fire pit in my backyard. Uh, it came out pretty good, surprisingly. And uh, the acid edge on it is vinegar. And it's quite old now, about 10 months since I've done it, and it's showing some wear and a uh, little bit of corrosion on it. So it's kind of a worn cliff slash sheep's foot slash uh, butcher knife type thing going on to it. Um, but it is fairly useful that the edge is shaving sharp. Probably can't see the polish on it, but uh, it's dropped. Um, two inch cutting edge there, two and a half inch blade. You might be wondering why there's such a big finger choil, and that's because I decided that it would be more important to have a, a finger choil rather than a little bit extra blade length, simply because it would allow me to be more comfortable with the knife and use it harder. Um, so the, as you can see the, the tang in the knife comes very far in, so your palm of your hand rests on that when you're using it. In a typical friction folder, your grip would be like this. So the only thing keeping the blade open is the tang, which, it's somewhat effective on this knife, but it could be a little bit longer, so it's not 100% effective. Um, that's why we have the finger choil, so I lock my front finger in, lock my thumb in. Once all my fingers lock in, as you can see there's a secondary choil there, the meat of my hand is on the back of the blade, and with my index pointer finger gripped into that, um, it's pretty solid. A little bit of motion, but when you're cutting it, it really doesn't move at all. So that's pretty much it for this guy. Um, I do have plans of making a second revised version, if you will, of this knife. Um, that doesn't make this knife obsolete. I'll probably use this one more for hiking and stuff. because It's going to end up being lighter than the other one if I do make another one. Um, the plan for the other one is uh, basically to add an extra inch of blade length, V-grind, um, add a uh, swedge here for better penetration, and it, the, instead of the jimping, I want to drop, uh, put a cutout in there too to drop your thumb down into, so the palm makes tighter contact with the, the tang of the knife. Also, that would be a little bit longer. There would also be a grind on it to use as a pry bar, and uh, I probably wouldn't use the bicycle chain ring bolts again, only because they were very hard to work with, find the right size drill bit, and uh, I had to modify phosphor bronze washers to, to fit these, and that was quite a pain in the, the butt. So. That's pretty much the knife. Um, 
it's somewhat compact in the hand and in the pocket. It's a little bit tall. Um, so that blade is pretty tall on it. Um, really what it comes down to is it, it feels like a much, much, much larger knife in the hand when you're using it than it actually is. and it gives you quite a bit of confidence. Um, the only drawback to that is sometimes the, the lack of blade length um, rears it head, its head because you try to use the knife for more than it can handle. Um, so that's one of the reasons you want to make the blade a little bit longer. But overall I'm quite, quite satisfied with it for my first folding knife. And this is, like I said, my only second knife I've ever made. I made a friction fold, uh, excuse me, fixed blade before this. I don't really use that one much, but I typically carry this almost every day. Um, so I've become quite familiar with it, quite confident with it, and uh, quite comfortable with it. Uh, even though it has bit me once. I've got a good bite on my hand there. Okay. But, uh, yeah, so that's that. Thanks for watching. Bye.